Welcome to the fourth video of module 6. In the previous video, we discussed about security implementations in NAS. Now, this video talks about security implementations in IPSAN. So, uh, for securing IPSAN, you have initially the CHAP, that is Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. So, this is an authentication protocol uh, used by network devices and hosts. Okay and um, it uses um, like random secrets of 12 to 128 characters okay and uh, there is a hash function using md5 algorithm okay and um, this is actually a two-way authentication scenario and this can be shown in this figure now we have an initiator and a target uh, which is the storage array so the host initiates a login to the target and the uh, chap challenge is sent to the initiator okay and the initiator takes the shared key and calculates the value using one-way hash function and this hash value is returned to the target and the target is computing the expected hash value and the shared uh, secret is compared um, and uh, the sixth one that is if it is matched uh, the authentication is acknowledged okay and this these are the steps you can go through it now the next way of securing IPSAN is using ISNS discovery domains ISNS is nothing but internet uh, storage name server so here we use uh, ISNS uh, discovery domains uh, as you can see the IPSAN how it is secured is it has like uh, two uh, domains two uh, discovery domains okay so all those hosts which are in a particular domain configured with a particular domain only can access okay so uh, it seems it functions same as uh, FC zones um, fiber channel zones and the discovery domains provide functional groupings of the devices and uh, that is for devices to communicate with one another they must be configured uh, in the same discovery domain as i said where they should be within the same domain okay and uh, some notifications for state chain notifications scns um, are the ones that inform the isns server when the devices are added or removed from the domain then next we go to so we have discussed the implementations of security in the three types of uh, networking uh, devices okay now next we go to the storage infrastructure management okay next main topic so why do we go for infrastructure management of um, the storage now this reason is because of the unprecedented growth of information then applications are so much uh, massively developed okay complex uh, complexity of business processes requirements of uh, 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 24 7 availability of information so all these um, calls upon a proper management of the storage infrastructure then it uh, requires implementations of intelligent tools and robust processes to meet the service levels okay then uh, for performance tuning data protection etc all these things you can just go through it it all demands um, storage infrastructure management next explain uh, monitoring storage infrastructure how do you monitor the storage infrastructure and also the key storage infrastructure components that have to be monitored so what is this uh, monitoring for it is to provide a performance and accessibility status okay of the components then enables administrators to perform the essential management activities so uh, you know monitoring uh, the use of monitoring it is to uh, know uh, where or is there any performance issues or accessibility accessibility issues etc okay mm, to keep track of the resources and so on now uh, so that's the need of uh, monitoring now the uh, components that need to be monitored are the servers networks and storage arrays okay we'll be explaining it uh, later 
and uh, uh, the parameters regarding these components that should be assessed or uh, monitored are accessibility capacity performance and security okay so this figure just shows you uh, that in um, a network like this uh, um, storage infrastructure environment you have the main three components it is servers network and storage arrays as seen you have a network you have the server with all these things then uh, you have the storage arrays so these are the points relevant to these components okay next um, how to explain these points that is the parameters for um, the monitoring storage infrastructure monitoring of storage infrastructure so the parameters are first one accessibility so we'll be discussing the role of accessibility and an example okay each one's uh, example we'll be discussing with the figure so first is accessibility it refers to the availability of a component any component okay hardware software etc okay it monitors the accessibility of hardware components and software components and uh, continuous monitoring for expected accessibility of each component and reporting any deviation will help the admin administrator to identify any failing components and plan for corrective actions now let's consider accessibility accessibility monitoring example in case of switch failure it's very simple so you have um application servers h1 h2 h3 okay and they are connected to the storage array using two switches okay now the um accessibility uh, is provided by provide uh, providing um redundant switches okay Mm, so you can see here consider an implementation uh, with three servers uh, through three switches they are connected okay and multipathing software has been installed on all the three servers and in a case where one of the switch sw1 uh, fails then the multipathing software initiates a path failover and all the servers will continue to access data through the other switch sw2 okay uh, so in case so that is a um, backup provided or in case a redundancy provided okay now however due to the absence of this redundant switch a second switch failure if the second switch also fails it uh, results in the inaccessibility of the array so monitoring for accessibility will enable this kind of uh, failures okay next is uh, capacity so capacity refers to the amount of storage information um, or storage infrastructure resources which are available okay now if you consider the example now uh, from time to time we need to monitor the capacity why because now in this figure if without a file system monitoring now uh, if the file system uh, gets full the blue shows that it is full okay uh, it just uh, says it is inaccessible without giving any uh, prior information for the administrator to give uh, to free space for the incoming data okay so that is a problem uh, with uh, in the case there is no file system monitoring but if there is a file system monitoring then when the file system is um, uh, like um, it's going to be full 66 percent full a warning is there when it is 80 percent full a critical warning uh, warning is there so that would give enough time for the administrator to free up the space okay uh, so that is what is given here so the monitoring can be configured to issue a message when thresholds are reached on the file system capacity you can just go through it okay next is performance it evaluates the efficiency and utilization of components and identifies the bottlenecks so example is uh, in the case of an array port utilization so you can see here it is a similar example now you have the application servers h1 h2 h3 and they are linked through switches s1 sw1 and sw2 and uh, they are accessing accessing the storage array through two ports okay and um, supposing you want a new server to add on 
okay support or then you can see the graph here if the port utilization is already near to 100 percent that is along this red line that means maximum port is being utilized then uh, adding a new server would be difficult because port, port utilization is already in its is its highest is at its highest so where in um, whereas if it is um, along this dotted line then there is uh, no much um, issues when you add in a new server so that's given here uh, sh this example shows the importance of monitoring uh, performance on storage arrays and you have the servers h1 h2 uh, h3 uh, connected through switches okay and a new server um, if it has to be deployed to share the same ports as this uh, h1 through h3 then uh, monitoring the array port utilization ensures that the new server being added does not adversely affect the performance of the other servers okay so the explanation is given uh, that is if the port utilization prior to deploying the new server is close to 100 percent then deploying the new server is not recommended because it will cause a performance degrading okay now next is security that is to ensure the confidentiality integrity and availability of our of our storage infrastructure okay it uh, monitoring a storage infrastructure for security helps to track and prevent unauthorized access whether may it be accidental or malicious okay now an example is now in the case of a storage array now you have work groups uh, one and two okay and uh, you have two switches which is connected to the um, storage array okay then supposing uh, one group tries to replicate the other okay there must be a proper monitoring um, um, system there that is for security uh, and uh, a warning message like attempted replication of um, working group 2 uh, by the working group 1 user and access denied so such kind of warning messages are possible only if uh, you have a security um, monitoring mechanism so that's what's given here um, so if the user from wg1 tries to make a, a local replica of data that belongs to wg2 okay if this action is not monitored or recorded it is difficult to track such a violation of security protocols so um, that's it and including the video thank you